The word of the Lord for our consideration together today is today's Old Testament reading from Daniel chapter 1. In the name of Jesus Christ, dear fellow citizens of God's heavenly kingdom, let's begin with a word association this morning. What is the first word or thought that comes to your mind when you hear the word government? Now, some might say politics or high taxes or dysfunctionally divided. We know that government is necessary, but often we have a negative view of it. Did any of you choose the word blessing to describe government? Today, God's word teaches us that God is the one who establishes government to bless us. We know that's not always easy to see, as it must not have been easy for Daniel and Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah either. The government that they had known in the nation of Judah was suddenly gone. In 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, attacked and defeated Jerusalem. Judah's king was taken into captivity. And anything of value, even the gold in God's temple, was hauled away to Babylon. But Nebuchadnezzar didn't stop there. He also commanded that young people who had more talents and abilities should be taken to Babylon too. And so Daniel and his friends were suddenly separated from their families. And as youths, they found themselves far from home with no say about their future. They had to learn a new language and new customs. They were enlisted in a three-year course of study to prepare them to serve in Nebuchadnezzar's government. And to emphasize how little control they had of their lives, they were even given new names. Daniel, whose name means God is my judge, was now called Belteshazzar, a name that honored one of Babylon's false gods. And the others became Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So what did they do? How did Daniel and the others respond to the loss of their freedom and to an oppressive government telling them what they had to do? They studied and applied themselves to the best of their abilities. And they far excelled the other students in the class. Now, why would they give their best efforts to the enemy nation that had defeated them? I think they remembered that God was still the one who was in control. God was the one who had established that Babylonian government and had placed them under its authority. Now, is that still true today? Does God still establish the governments of the world, including our own government? In our reading from Romans chapter 13, we heard this. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Some authorities in the world are elected into office. Some inherit their positions of power. And others take over by force, but God tells us here that in each case, he is the one who establishes earthly government. Now, why does God give authority to earthly leaders? He does it because he wants to bless us. God wants an ordered world where good is encouraged and where evil is curtailed and punished. A world without order is chaos. And people who live in places where there is no government 
can tell you how frightening it is. When there is no one who will come to help you if someone is threatening your life or your property. Everything that you have worked for and saved up to provide for your family can be gone in a moment. And so God gives authority to earthly leaders so that they can keep order, so that people can live in peace and safety. God even says that government leaders are his servants. Whether they know it or not, he's the one who's given them authority to keep law and order. And together with the authority that God gives to parents in the home, and the authority that God gives to leaders in his church, he gives authority to those in government to bless us and to care for us. Through our parents in the home, God wants to protect our bodies and our souls. Through leaders in the church, God wants to care for us spiritually. And to government, God has given the responsibility to promote our earthly well-being. So, thank God for government, right? But it's not always so easy because government leaders are not always correct. And sometimes they don't tell the truth. And sometimes they promote policies that disagree with God's word. Sometimes they give unfair advantages to those who support them while others are left to suffer. So what then? Are we still to thank God for government? Every earthly leader is a sinful human being who cannot govern perfectly. And yet God says he is still the one who establishes government. He certainly does not approve of the sinful actions that they do. And they will be responsible to God for how they have used the authority that he's given them. But God speaks to us about our responsibility towards those who have authority over us. Again, in our Romans 13 reading, we hear this. Be subject to the governing authorities and willingly acknowledge their God-given role and responsibility. God also says, do what is right. Obey the laws. And give to everyone what you owe them. God speaks of something that we owe, something that we are actually obligated to give to those who are in authority over us. What do we owe them? Well, if we owe taxes, we are to pay them honestly. And God says that we owe honor and respect. And our sinful nature might say, what? Why do I have to respect those who promote policies that I disagree with? Or how can I honor those who champion causes that God says are sinful? In our politically divided times, honor and respect are seldom shown with all the name-calling on both sides. How can the mouths of God's people avoid the four-letter words and the angry, disrespectful rhetoric that is so common today. Well, please remember something that so many people forget or don't even know. Something that Daniel and his friends did not forget. The supreme ruler of all is the Lord Jesus. Raised from death, he is at the Father's right hand. And there, he is head over everything for his church, his family of believers. And that includes you. So no matter who is currently in office, whether you voted for them or not, the Lord Jesus is ruling and working in all things 
for your good, even when that is hard to see. Your sins have been forgiven. Nothing can separate you from his love. Eternal victory is yours. And that means that you don't have to hope that in the next election the right people will get elected and then finally your life can be better. Remember who you are, child of God, a citizen of heaven. You are awaiting and looking forward to a better, eternal country. Let the sure hope that you have in Christ shine forth as you show respect and honor towards those in authority. Don't put your hope and your trust in government. Put your hope and your trust in God alone, even as you honor and respect those he places in authority. That's what Daniel and his friends did. They lived in confidence, confident faith that God was in control as they gave respect and honor to the government. They gave to government what they owed to government. But then they faced a challenge to their faith. The government wanted them to give what they owed only to God. God's Old Testament people, the Israelites, had laws about lots of different things, including foods that they could and could not eat. These laws were in effect until the time of the coming Savior. And so at the time that Daniel was living, there were certain foods that were unclean, and they were not to eat them. The Babylonians did not follow God's Old Testament law, and they were the ones who were preparing the food that Daniel had to eat. Daniel did not want to disobey God, so he respectfully asked permission to eat only the foods that God permitted. The official who was in charge was concerned that Daniel would start to look malnourished and the king would be upset. It was risky even for Daniel to ask this as an exile in a foreign land. But God blessed his courage. <clears throat> and in just 10 days, he was looking healthier than the others. Daniel willingly obeyed the government as long as he was not required to disobey God. Jesus says something very similar in today's gospel when he says, give back to Caesar, the emperor of the Roman Empire that was in charge at the time, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. To government, we give what belongs to government. Taxes, honor, respect, obedience, unless government requires us to do something sinful. Then we must obey God rather than human beings, because only God receives our worship and glory and ultimate obedience. Those things belong <clears throat> only to God. Now, just a few days after Jesus spoke these words about Caesar, one of Caesar's representatives, Pontius Pilate, unfairly condemned him to death. Despite Pilate's evil actions, God was still the one who was in control, fulfilling his plan to save sinners. As Jesus had always done, he obeyed those in authority. And he willingly obeyed and went to the cross to pay for my sins and for yours, including our failures to always honor and respect and obey those in authority. As God's forgiven children, our real and lasting citizenship is in heaven. The Lord Jesus is ruler of all. And to him we give worship and glory and praise, even as we show honor and respect 
towards those in authority. And so the Bible encourages us to pray for those who are in authority. In our country, we have the right to respectfully disagree with laws and policies that defy God's will, but we will disobey government only when government requires us to sin against God. And even in those challenging times, we still trust that God is the one who is in control. Even if he allows our faith to be tested in those things, we trust that he must have a good purpose in the spiritual darkness of Babylon's idolatry. Daniel's faithful witness shined brightly to God's glory. If in the spiritual darkness of our times, government makes it more difficult for us to live our faith, then we pray for God to give us strength, that we may be faithful and put him first to his glory. There can be many different words that may come to mind to describe government. Earthly government is always going to be imperfect. And yet we remember that God is the one who has established government to bless us. And for that, we say, thank God for government. Amen.